is Dr. Kristen Heinrichs. I'm a physical therapist and biomechanist specializing in concussion rehabilitation and orthopedics. Today I'd like to talk with you about the concept of neurodynamics. We all know that when you go to the gym and you do flexibility exercises that you certainly can feel muscle and tendon stretching and that's what we mostly think about. But there's another dimension that I'd like to introduce to you and that's the nervous system. And the nervous system is intimately connected with everything we do. And actually, most of what we do is controlled by the nervous system, and that's where most of research is going these days. So, basically, the nervous system, if you think about it, is a continuum. You think about the brain and the spinal cord and all of the nerves that come off of each vertebral segment throughout the spine, with the largest groupings being in the, in the neck area with the brachial plexus and in the lumbar area with the lumbosacral plexus. So these are a continuum with the nerves, the peripheral nerves, that emanate from those regions. There are three major nerve trunks in the upper body and one large major nerve in the lower, in the lower body. And we all know about the sciatic nerve. So if I were to take every bit of tissue out of your body and just leave your nervous system, I would have this beautiful intricate lacework of nerves that come from the brain and the spinal cord. So it's a bit like a sweater. If I pull on my jersey, on one side, it's going to have a distant effect. And it's the same thing with the nervous system. So frequently when patients come to me who have neck or back issues, um, I oftentimes will look at this entire system and to learn about it is really educational for my patients. So basically what happens is that we can differentiate between neural and muscular tenderness and other non-neural structures by a series of simple tests. And basically what we do is we follow the concept of pinch and tensioning. So we can pinch the tissue or we can tension it or put it under load. Okay? So it's a little bit like a, an analogy that I use is, is a thread and rope analogy. So if I pull on a thread, I'll stretch that thread. If I pull on a thread with the same amount of force that I would pull on a rope, I would certainly break the thread. And so nerves not only conduct information, sensory information about where we are in space, where our feet are, hot, cold, um, to the brain, they also are very capable of producing sensations. So if you pull on a nerve, it's going to produce a sensation frequently of stretch, or it could also be of pain. So if you follow this thread rope analogy, more is not necessarily better. So when you do the stretches, what you're going to do is you're just going to take the stretch to the point where you begin to feel it and then you back off. And there are two ways of doing this. You can do a slider, which is just sort of the concept of flossing your teeth. You're going to just be moving the nerve back and forth. Or you can be a ten do a tensioner, which is a little bit more vigorous. Basically what happens is you're pulling from both ends of the tissue to stretch it. Okay? The last thing I want you to remember is the brain. The brain controls everything. And a lot of times sensitivity in the nervous system, peripherally or in the body, in the arms and the legs, can also be due to changes in the central nervous system. So we talk about the sensitized nervous system, and, and David Butler actually goes into this in a lot more detail. So let me just show you how this works. In the upper body, we have the cervical uh, uh, plexus and uh, the brachial plexus, and it comes from each of the nerve segments here. It joins up above the clavicle, below the clavicle, and in front of the, the in, below the clavicle, it doesn't really do much. And then it begins to reorganize again around the brachial artery, okay? And the brachial artery is right here. So you can see the nerves as they begin to differentiate, okay? So think about it this way. This green nerve right here is the ulnar nerve. So if you hit your funny bone, this is the nerve that you twing. Um, cyclists can get a cyclist palsy by placing direct pressure on the ulnar nerve at the wrist. So if I'm going to tension this, can you see how I would put tension on this segment if I press the shoulder blade down? Okay. The next step in the test, and I won't be able to show you the whole test just because of the restrictions of the skeleton, is you bring the arm out to the side, bend the elbow, turn the arm back, and extend the wrist. And now you can see that I could probably play this, this ulnar nerve like a banjo string. So any time that there's a restriction and preventing that gliding, that's when you're going to have the problems. So our next video is going to talk about the three major uh, nerves in the upper body, how you can do a quick screening, self-screening, 
and a few simple exercises that we've probably gone through with you during your rehabilitation session. And then I'll also address the, the lower extremity in another video and teach you how to differentiate between hamstring flexibility and neural flexibility. So on to the next.